Duh. Making it versus buying it. That's what we're talking about today. I'm making this video so I can post it to all those folks that say this all the time is I can make it cheaper. It's just such a duh comment, right? Because if you're making something for yourself, of course you can make it cheaper. There's a huge component that's not involved, right? There's no labor cost. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Today I want to go through all the costs that go into making something on your own just for yourself versus, hey, well, I made it for myself. Now I want to make it for other folks. And then it transitions to somebody like me, right? That manufactures products, that buys products to resell from manufacturers. And there's a lot of stuff that's involved. And so, yeah, I'm making this so I can, I can send that to some of those folks. But also, this is kind of a business area of discussion, right? And I like to make these videos too. And, and you know, we'll run sales and folks are like, hey, can I stack another discount on top of this discount and, and then so on and so forth. And to a certain extent, there's only so much profit to go around. I mean, most of what you see in a price of a product is cost, right? There's not a lot of room for margin in there. So if you sell something that's $1,000, you're not making $1,000, right? If you sell something for three grand, you're not making three grand. Margins are a lot skinnier than that. And so there's only so much meat that's left on the bone. All right, so let's start with making it for yourself, right? And so I think, most folks out there, although we get some that say they can make it themselves cheaper, that, that admit they don't have the skill set to do it, but you need to have the skills to be able to, to fab something up that's not going to fall apart, to cut steel, to put it together, right? To, to design it to fit your, your tractor, your, your loader, your three-point hitch. All those skills there if you want to paint it, right, or powder coat it. But not just that, in order to use those skills, you have to have the tools, the equipment to do it. So you need to buy the plasma cutter, the welder. You gotta have a shop to do it in, or a garage, or a barn, or something. You need to have consumables to, to, to use as well. So there's a lot of other costs that go in up front, and maybe for that equipment, you can reuse it then on other pieces of equipment down the road, but nonetheless, it's an investment. It's a cost that's associated with building that tool. And then you have maybe the quality or the features. You know, a little bit of that goes hand in hand, I suppose. And I take uh, the snow pusher, for example, where, um, and what spurred this video was a recent comment that I can make a snow pusher for, for myself a lot cheaper than that. And I'm thinking, yeah, there's a lot of snow pushers out there that are just a really simple, basic design, just flat walls like a like a box, right? Just a, a flat plate in the back, a couple straight walls on the side, and you're good to go. And that's, sure, that's something that most folks could do, but this is this is rolled. This, this back here is rolled, it's, it's broke uh, on many different areas, and so it's a complex piece of machinery. It's a double wall side plate that's on there. This back drag is very stout. The whole thing is very stout. And so when somebody sees pictures or a video online, it's really hard to to tell how substantial a piece of equipment is. And so you may very easily underestimate the steel thickness, you know, the, the structural support, um, just the, the wells that are required, everything that goes into it to get to the same level of quality. And on that note, there's a lot of really good folks out there. A lot of you guys watch, a lot of you on the forums too that are making some awesome stuff in your shops at home. And that is a skill set I do not possess, right? But on the flip side, there's skill sets that I have that you don't possess. So, it's a good mix and match there. And if you have the ability to make a snow pusher like this or a stump bucket or a Versa bracket or hitch hangers or whatever, the list goes on and on. I mean, more power to you. However, it comes a time where you're thinking, hmm, maybe I've made a few things now. Maybe I could make a, a little business for myself here, a little side hustle and grow this out. Now you have to account for all sorts of other costs and it can kind of take the fun out of it, right? Because you might be thinking, boy, there's a lot of money to be made here. But when you really want to get legitimate and do it the right way, well, I don't, want to, I don't want to break your heart, but let's go through it. Folks, if you're watching this, there's a good chance you own a tractor and you're going to need more attachments in the future. Check out what we have to offer at goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. All right, so for this, I had, I had so many things that I jotted down, I, I gotta reference this. So number one, we have insurance, right? We have insurance for the business. You know, we have insurance for liability, um, you know, in case somebody gets hurt with something that we sold to them. We have to make sure we're protected. You know, uh, the cost to set up an LLC so that you have a separate entity 
to protect your own personal assets from your business assets. There's a cost there. Labor cost is real now, right? Because maybe you start out being able to do it yourself, but now you're trying to earn a living doing it. And so your hourly time invested or per minute, however you want to do it, has a cost associated to it that you need to roll into the price. There's some good things too though. I mean, if you have a cell phone that you can use for the business, you can write that off, but it's still a cost. Internet, utilities, right? If you want to heat it, AC, lights, gas, propane, whatever you need, all those are utilities that are associated now with the business. Losses, right? So that could be theft. That could be something damaged during transit. You're shipping to customers and it's damaged that way. Maybe it's damaged inbound to you and it wasn't insured. Downtime, right? And think of downtime as not going directly into your product. And so maybe you can call that something else, but when you're answering the phone, talking to a customer, you're doing what I'm doing right now, even for my business. My business is selling tractor attachments. And every second that I'm not answering emails or on the phone with a customer is time that's not directly, directly helping my business, right? These videos hopefully help and promote it. That's another cost, right? That's marketing cost that goes into it too. So you can market through videos, through Facebook, through forums, through your website, Google ads, all sorts of different ways to do that. But those are real costs that you need to factor in in order to let people know about your product. We're not all gonna go viral. You have little costs, you don't even think about, it, right? You have credit card fees, you have packing material fees if you're gonna ship, right? You've got shipping costs that maybe you do exact shipping costs, maybe you do like kind of a level loaded shipping costs and you win some, you lose some. You have quality issues. I know, as much as we like to think it about ourselves, we are human, we're gonna make mistakes or we're gonna hire somebody and they're gonna make mistakes. And so then the mistakes cost even more at that point. And sometimes you don't know the mistake until the customer has it. And then what do you do? So there's a ton of different costs and variables and factors that go into it. And I guess from a business owner who's also a consumer, right? I'm on both sides of the fence here. If you own a business, you're also a consumer. And so you can see it both ways and you understand the simple statement of I can make it a lot cheaper and I think that can kind of get, well it does, it gets irritating at times because it's like, I don't know if, like, do they realize? Yeah, of course, everybody knows you can make it cheaper by yourself. That's why there's a grocery store versus restaurants, right? That's why there's Home Depot versus contractors that do things. This kind of stuff's been out there forever. You know, you can, you can do things yourself if you want to, but you can also pay a premium and have somebody else do it for you. That's been an argument to be made as long as we've been around. And we haven't even talked about maybe the most important part of this all, which is profit, right? You're doing this to make a living, to make money, right? And, and if you're working for peanuts, that's no fun. You're gonna, you're gonna get tired of it very quickly. So really, as far as profit goes, there is no one size fits all answer on that. But I think an easy way to comprehend it is if you're gonna sell something for $1,000 and you're only gonna make 20 bucks on it, well, that's, probably not worth your time, right? If you can sell something for $1,000 and make 150 or 200 bucks on it, then I think most of us would agree, generally that's gonna be worth our time unless it was somehow super labor intensive where we had to, I don't know, work for two days or something just to make 150 bucks, that wouldn't be worth it, right? You know, for me, when I'm looking at bringing on a new line and we've kind of gone through everything else, you know, with features and quality and, and production and how, however the, the business is structured, it really comes down to at that point, if it passes the smell test just from a, a profit standpoint, right? Is, is it a competitive price that this manufacturer can offer to me that I can pass on to my customers? You know, and that's pretty easy, right? If it's, if it's in the right range where everything else is, that's, that's good to go. But also the profit margins need to be there because I have to account for these other costs. And, and if it's something that's gonna be $1,000 or three grand and I'm making 50 bucks on it or even $100, that's honestly not enough because there's too much risk for things to go wrong there for me to think that that's okay. So I need to have a higher margin on that so I can account for when things go wrong, the, the unknown. And I think that's pretty easy to do. So roll up your costs slap on your profit that you wanna make compared to everything else that's out there on the market. And does it pass the sniff test, right? Is that, okay, yeah, I can do that. I'm satisfied with that. Or eh, that's pretty marginal, you know? I don't think that's worth my time. And we've done that with all sorts of products that we've looked to develop ourselves. A lot of them just, they're out in the field somewhere rusting away because they're just not worth our time. It was a great idea, but for one reason or another, it wasn't feasible. So next time you leave a comment that says, ah, I can build it cheaper, just remember, you don't value your time at all, right? You work for free. And so that's a huge factor of it there. You know, give me some, give me some content, you know, give me some substance there of how you can build it cheaper because obviously you do it yourself in your garage, you have the tools already. 
I would hope you could build it cheaper, right? But you're comparing it against something completely different. It's apples versus oranges. But on that note, if you do have that skill set to do so, I am slightly jealous of you because I would love to learn those skills someday. I just don't possess them myself, but there's only so much time of the day. Who knows? Maybe when things slow down, kids graduate, it's just me and my wife, I'll have more time to do some new hobbies. Now, for those of you that aren't in the section of I can make it myself. Well, we'd love to help you out. We sell the ship tractor attachments all over the country every day of the week. Check out goodworkstractors.com to see what we have for sale. And if you want to keep up with what we're doing around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. It is completely free. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.